This presentation is a pitch to senior design at UCF, that's COP 4934, fall of 2019. The topic of this presentation is the Schillinger System of Music Composition. So for all of my pitches here in fall of 2019, you can go to ricklineker.com slash pitches 2019 and download the slides or review the or take a look at a recording I made of this pitch and hopefully that will give you a better idea of what I'm asking for and give you a better idea of if this project is for you. So in 1943 a guy named Joseph Schillinger wrote the mathematical basis of the arts and I can tell you when I like first heard about this book I was all into it. I bought a copy which was very hard to do at the time. Uh, it was a used copy. When, when I was an undergrad I bought it and I looked at it. It was just amazing. It was actually pretty, it was about a thousand pages. Um, and he, he posited that all art has mathematical relationships um, at its fundamental. He did make some very compelling cases and from that point on I thought you know you could get a computer to write fairly good music um, based on his, his principles. So then as an undergrad I, I became aware of uh, two, uh, I became aware of a two volume set The Schillinger System of Musical Composition. Now Schillinger himself wrote the mathematical basis of the arts, but he did not write this pair of um, vi this this two volume set. Henry Cowell, who was a renowned composer at the time, put together the Schillinger system of musical composition from his uh, Schill from Schillinger's notes. And um, I've heard I talked to a couple of people way back in the day who who said that Schillinger would have never released these two volumes. Because they were they were so unclear and so so cloudy and, and really just did not hit the mark. But the thing is, Cal thought he was doing everybody a favor by you know publishing the notes. And you know a lot of people have taken a look at these uh, volumes. So now we get to this idea of computer assisted music composition. And composers have embraced Schillinger's work as a way to write computer-assisted music composition software. I've exchanged quite a few emails with people who, especially software engineers who are musically inclined, who said, I'm going to write the next system to automatically you know, compose music based on this system. But the material was written from notes and, and really very unclear. And um, I talked to a guy named Asher Zlotnick. He was one of seven people who he was one of seven people who Schillinger had passed the baton on to. This guy named Zlotnick lived in Baltimore and um, I, I talked to him because I wanted to study with him when I was an undergrad and uh, he, he was willing to take me on but I, I didn't have enough money to spend the summer in, in Baltimore. I had to work because I was your typical poor undergraduate. But one of the things he told me was he said Schillinger would have never released those two volumes because they just weren't very good and weren't very complete. Didn't represent his ideas. Um, mostly what he said though was they were too hard to understand because the explanations were so bad. Um, I don't know of a single com composer, current composer, who has written software that implements Schillinger's ideas. Some really easy attempts at it, but they never actually hit the mark. Besides sort of the, the difficulty in understanding the material, the two volumes are total 1,500 pages between the two of them. This is a formidable challenge to anybody who wants to study this system. So here's the problem that this project uh, aims to solve. To start a comprehensive explanation that composers and software engineers can use to create computer assisted composition. Now when I say composers slash software engineers, sometimes like me, they're the same. I write music, but I'm also a software engineer. I'm actually targeting that very thin sliver of people who, who are in the music composition 
and software engineer category. But I think we, we would have had a lot more progress had there been really, really good understanding of the Schillinger system of musical composition. The problem we're trying to solve is to bring this system of musical composition to an easily understandable and therefore usable uh, system. So to create web-based instruction that features text, recorded text, and JavaScript-based examples of the concepts. So basically, we'll take the, the book text, we'll, we'll embed that, we'll record that so that people can just listen to it, and then we'll have JavaScript examples, which I'll get to later, that illustrate, and these are interactive, and they'll illustrate the concepts. So it's going to make it so much easier for people to understand what he's talking about. Users can interactively use the JavaScript apps to experiment with the concepts that are explained. So here's an example of what might be confused. The following confusing example is about fractioning. And it could be a useful technique for music composition, but it's really hard to understand. You have this. So Schillinger has like two paragraphs. Well, really, the notes have two paragraphs explaining what this is. And then you got this diagram. And like, what does that mean? What we're trying to do is take a JavaScript app and use it to explain what this means in terms of uh, rendering sound. So there's, there are some constraints and enhancements that we'll, we'll talk about right now. So obviously out of this, this two volume set we're not going to be able to do the whole thing. Um, it's, really divided into 12 different uh, topics. The first one is rhythm. So this project will just be dealing with rhythm. However, the, the project has to be extensible. It has to basically build a framework so that after this first uh, rhythm topic is, is expanded on and explained, that, that the other 11 topics can easily be added. Um, while, while the team is actually doing the, the, the rhythm topic, I might actually myself be doing the next topic, um, which is harmony. And um, so I can take advantage of the, the work that the team does along the way and, and thus offer really good cr criticism. The project has to be extensible and create a framework so that the other 11 sections can be added easily. So either I'll do that or future teams will do that. Um, but what you're doing is you're doing the first part of 12 sections. The enhancements are going to be some of the JavaScript apps lend themselves to saving for later visitors to hear. So let's say that previous uh, example I gave you. So I might be able to experiment with that, that concept. And maybe I, I want to save it, save it for later people to hear what I've done. So um, if, I, if I choose to save it, it will go to a database on the Internet. And then we'll, we'll offer like a list of the last 10 or 20 people and um, then I can I can hear what other people have done and, and what they've created based on these 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 concepts now here is maybe even the most important part of this is some of the JavaScript apps will lend themselves to machine learning and add-ons so we can take it from sort of 19 the, the 1940s to the 2020s or 2019s but you'll be done with this project in 2020 and not only will we have the JavaScript apps that illustrate the concepts, but we'll actually be able, for a lot of them, be able to add machine learning. So the organization goes like this. The overall website will be organized into 12 sections of the system. And you're only going to do the first uh, section. However, we need to have the, 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 the framework uh, able to accept the other 11, because otherwise, what good would this be? Only the first section will be developed during this project. However, um, I may, may go ahead and do, do the second section just to make sure that it's, this system is totally extensible. And I can go ahead and add on. Each section will be organized into subsections that include the following. Um, for instance, the, the, the first, the rhythm subsection has, I think, uh, 14 subchapters. And, and so each subchapter chapter that's listed in the book is um, each subchapter then then will be will be sort of one of one of fourteen sections that can be accessed. And by the way, this this book is is has exceeded its copyright, so it, it is permissible to um, put the text literally into the 
um, website and to record it literally so people can listen to it. So we'll have audio clips that can be played, which, which if people don't want to read the text, they can listen to the text. Um, it'd also be really nice to have like some sort of RSS feed so people can put this into their, their uh, devices. So we're going to have JavaScript apps that illustrate the topics, uh, interactive JavaScript apps. An example of this might be uh, the interferences of periodicities. For this topic, say, a JavaScript app will allow users to select uh, periodicity values, which will then be graphed, and the results, uh, the resulting interference is played as audio. Um, and hopefully, maybe even saved to the database so other people can listen to what you've done. So that's kind of the organi organization of the whole um, project. So here are the deliverables. A website up the modern standards featuring uh, an introduction to the Schillinger system of musical composition. And by the way, there are quite a few websites that can be used as uh, research for, for th there are a number of websites that talk about the Schillinger system of musical composition. None of them do anything about it. None of them really t teach you how to use it. But you can find a lot of sort of intro information. Twelve sections for each section of the book. Uh, only the first of which, as I've said, will be complete. But here again, the web UI needs to provide a framework for the addition of the, the, the other sections. Um, subsections of the first, rhythm section, so there'll be 14 subsections. I'm not sure on that number, it might be 12, it's 12 or 14, something like that. Each subsection will include explanation text, which is basically the text of the book. And I do have a PDF, but the PDF has been, it was a scanned version of the book, so basically we'll have to, there, it's not even that much text, we'll have to manually type that in. Audio clips of the explanations, so someone on the team will have to, to, to read the text. And lastly, the interactive JavaScript um, illustrating the topics. And of course, all this has to be uh, kept on GitHub, some sort of GitHub repository that, that we all have access to. So the software engineering deliverables are going to be uh, a good Gantt chart for the project. Uh, I require this so I can go on, I can see what the progress is, who's doing what. Uh, a website map, you have to create a, a map of the website and how its flow goes. Class diagrams, these will be pretty simple since the, I, I suspect the JavaScript app, apps are going to be fairly simple. And finally, you need to include a testing plan including unit integration and end-to-end -end tests. So the technical specs, the front end is going to be HTML, JavaScript, bootstrapped. And at our first meeting, we'll talk about this. Possibly I could be talked into you know, making it a React-based front end. The back end is going to be some sort of a some sort of a set of APIs based on either LAMP, Lisa, or Merge or something. And we'll talk about that and sort of negotiate that the first uh, time we get together. You are required to have bi-monthly meetings, and that is so I can keep close reign on how it's going. I've had many senior design teams sort of go off the rails, and, and by the time I got to talk to them, they were like, oh, here, here's where we are. I'm like, oh, that's like quite a bit further from, from where you're supposed to be. So bi-monthly meetings are really important. I've got my available times. They're, they're always on Monday and Wednesday either from 12.30 to 1.15, 3 to 4.15, or 6 to 7.15. So those are requirements, and your, your team will have to sign up for them. 